my gentleness and good behaviour gained so far on the emperor and his court and indeed on the people in general that i began to have hopes of getting my liberty in a short time the natives came by degrees to be less fearful of danger from me i would sometimes lie down and let five or six of them dance on my hand and at last the boys and girls ventured to come and play at hide-and-seek in my hair the horses of the army and of the royal stables were no longer shy having been daily led before me and one of the emperor's huntsmen on a large corsair took my foot shoe and all which was indeed a prodigious leap i amused the emperor one day in a very extraordinary manner i took nine sticks and fixed them firmly in the ground in a square then i took four other sticks and tied them parallel at each corner about two feet from the ground i fastened my handkerchief to the nine sticks that stood erect and extended it on all sides till it was as tight as the top of a drum and i desired the emperor to let a troop of his best horse twenty-four in number come and exercise upon this plain his majesty approved of the proposal and i took them up one by one with the proper officers to exercise them as soon as they got into order they divided into two parties discharged blunt arrows drew their swords fled and pursued and in short showed the best military discipline i ever beheld the parallel sticks secured them and their horses from falling off the stage and the emperor was so much delighted that he ordered this entertainment to be repeated several days and persuaded the empress herself to let me hold her in her chair within two yards of the stage whence she could view the whole performance fortunately no accident happened only once a fiery horse pawing with his hoof struck a hole in my handkerchief and overthrew his rider and himself but i immediately relieved them both and covering the hole with my hand i set down the troop with the other as i had taken them up the horse that fell was strained in the shoulder but the rider was not hurt and i repaired my handkerchief as well as i could however i would not trust to the strength of it any more in such dangerous enterprises i had sent so many petitions for my liberty that his majesty at length mentioned the matter in a full council where it was opposed by none except skyrish bolgolam admiral of the realm who was pleased without any provocation to be my mortal enemy however he agreed at length though he succeeded in himself drawing up the conditions on which i should be set free after they were read i was requested to swear to perform them in the method prescribed by their laws which was to hold my right foot in my left hand and to place the middle finger of my right hand on the crown of my head and my thumb on the top of my right ear but i have made a translation of the conditions which i here offer to the public Golbaste, mamarine, evelom, gurdile, shafim, muli, uli, gu, most mighty emperor of Lilliput, delight and terror of the universe, whose dominions extend to the ends of the globe, monarch of all monarchs, taller than the sons of men, whose feet press down to the centre, and whose head strikes against the sun, at whose nod the princes of the earth shake their knees pleasant as the spring comfortable as the summer fruitful as autumn dreadful as winter his most sublime majesty proposeth to the man mountain lately arrived at our celestial dominions the following articles which by a solemn oath he shall be obliged to perform first the man mountain shall not depart from our dominions without our license under the great seal second he shall not presume to come into our metropolis without our express order at which time the inhabitants shall have two hours warning to keep within doors third the said man mountain shall confine his walks to our principal high roads and not offer to walk or lie down in a meadow or field of corn fourth as he walks the said roads he shall take the utmost care not to trample upon the bodies of any of our loving subjects their horses or carriages nor take any of our subjects into his hands without their own consent fifth if an express requires extraordinary speed the man mountain shall be obliged to carry in his pocket the messenger and horse a six days journey and return the said messenger if so required safe to our imperial presence sixth he shall be our ally against our enemies in the island of blefuscu and do his utmost to destroy their fleet 
which is now preparing to invade us. Lastly, upon his solemn oath to observe all the above articles, the said Man Mountain shall have a daily allowance of meat and drink sufficient for the support of 1,724 of our subjects, with free access to our royal person, and other marks of our favor, given at our palace at Belfaruic, the twelfth day of the ninety-first moon of our reign. I swore to these articles with great cheerfulness, whereupon my chains were immediately unlocked, and I was at full liberty. One morning, about a fortnight after I had obtained my freedom, Reldresol, the emperor's secretary for private affairs, came to my house, attended only by one servant. He ordered his coach to wait at a distance, and desired that I should give him an hour's audience. I offered to lie down, that he might the more conveniently reach my ear, but he chose rather to let me hold him in my hand during our conversation. He began with compliments on my liberty, but he added that, save for the present state of things at court, perhaps I might not have obtained it so soon. For, he said, however flourishing we may seem to foreigners, we are in danger of an invasion from the island of Blefuscu, which is the other great empire of the universe, almost as large and as powerful as this of his majesty. For as to what we have heard you say, that there are other kingdoms in the world, inhabited by human creatures as large as yourself, our philosophers are very doubtful, and rather conjecture that you dropped from the moon, or one of the stars. Perhaps a hundred mortals of your size would soon destroy all the fruit and cattle of His Majesty's dominions. Besides, our histories of six thousand moons make no mention of any other regions than the two mighty empires of Lilliput and Blefuscu which, as I was going to tell you, are engaged in a most obstinate war, which began in the following manner. It is allowed on all hands that the primitive way of breaking eggs was upon the larger end, but his present majesty's grandfather, while he was a boy, going to eat an egg, and breaking it according to the ancient practice, happened to cut one of his fingers, whereupon the emperor, his father, made a law commanding all his subjects to break the smaller end of their eggs. The people so highly resented this law, that there have been six rebellions raised on the account, wherein one emperor lost his life, and another his crown. It is calculated that eleven hundred persons have at different times suffered rather than break their eggs at the smaller end. But these rebels, the Big Endians, have found so much encouragement at the emperor of Blefuscu's court, to which they always fled for refuge, that a bloody war, as I said, has been carried on between the two empires for six and thirty moons, and now the Blefuscudians have equipped a large fleet, and are preparing to descend upon us. Therefore his imperial majesty, placing great confidence in your valor and strength, has commanded me to set the case before you. I desired the secretary to present my humble duty to the emperor, and to let him know that I was ready, at the risk of my life, to defend him against all invaders.' 